All right, guys, I'm going to take a quick look at QQQ and overall still looks strong, setting higher lows every day, several days in a row, riding that four period moving average, the red line. It broke the high of Friday as well, closed near the high of the day, still riding that four week moving average on the weekly. There's a little bit of room to the upside, upwards of 372 almost on the weekly upper Bollinger Band. On the monthly, we have room to the upside around 383, $384 is the upper monthly Bollinger Band on QQQ, still showing strength, higher monthly lows many days in a row. It is getting overbought on the monthly 81 RSI. It's not extremely overbought, but it's a little overbought. Also a little bit overbought on the weekly at 72. But this is a blue sky breakout still. The markets look quite strong. It broke out of this wedge bullish. Didn't even really look back. Got a little bit close to testing it. Bulls bought that dip up. High volume spike at those low levels, suggesting a lot of buying pressure on the way down. A lot of people are looking to buy. All those dips are getting bought up. It didn't even consolidate. I was looking for a little pullback here, some consolidation. It didn't even do that. It went straight to higher highs. That's how strong the market is right now. The market is so strong right now that China dropped 4% yesterday. You know, it's even today. But it dropped over 4% yesterday. The Chinese index, Hang Seng, Hong Kong index. And it didn't even affect the U.S. indexes. Normally, you see China dropping or a lot of other index would be, indexes would be affected. But it didn't even affect the U.S. indexes. The TSX barely down. S&P 500 barely down. It actually closed up today. We're seeing a slight pullback in the futures, but this is so slight. It's nothing. Still looks healthy overall. All-time highs. The market looks quite strong. Some of the targets for the S&P 500, the year-end targets, were around 4,600. So I'm curious if once we start hitting those analyst price targets on the S&P 500, that we might start seeing some pullbacks around that area unless we head straight to 5,000 on the S&P 500, which anything is possible. We've already got a big gain for the year. I think um, the S&P 500 is already up. Let's go back to end of December. We were right around 3,700. 3, I mean, we're already up over 20%. I think we're up around 20% on the year already which that's more than a typical yearly gain on the S&P 500 already. But who knows, we can get up to 30%, 35% by the end of the year. It's very possible. The NASDAQ obviously up even more, showing a lot of strength. I don't see any red flags as of now. The VIX is weak. Slight increase today, but the VIX is showing a lot of weakness. And it's still 17. So the VIX, when people are really complacent, it, it tends to be around that 12 mark and it's still 17 which shows that there is still a little bit of fear in the markets and and so we might not have peaked yet you know and you know peak i say peak you know there's never a peak in the markets we're always going to go higher but there's temporary tops like over here you had that temporary top big pullback temporary top big pullback temporary top big pullback temporary top big pullback and right now, we're not seeing evidence of that happening as of yet. The markets look quite strong. And uh, right now, I remain bullish on the markets. And, you know, I'm the type of guy where I can get bearish in terms of I start to look at things and uh, the coronavirus and this and that. And, and sometimes I have a bearish thesis. But regardless of whatever my thesis is, at the end of the day, my thesis on the markets is bullish. You know, uh, whether it's bearish in the short term or whatnot, at the end of the day, my thesis is bullish. And, you know, we got over 100 years, 200 years plus or whatever of data to, to prove that. Um, but, yeah, sometimes in the short term, I'll be bearish. But right now, I'm not bearish. Right now, I remain bullish. Markets look strong. VIX doesn't look concerning right now. World markets look pretty good other than the Chinese markets. This is the Germany DAX. Looks pretty good. A um, little, little bit of V-shaped recovery. Nice healthy consolidation here on the, on the DAX. The only one that doesn't look good is this Hong Kong Hang Seng Index. Uh, this is a Shanghai co composite. 
Um, it looks better than the Hong Kong index. Um, I guess Hong Kong is just Hong Kong stocks. I don't, I don't know enough about it to go into detail about it, but what I'm saying is the markets still look good overall and, uh, we'll leave it at that. So we're going to watch this higher daily low pattern. So we're going to keep our eye on that. And the first sign of consolidation could be a break of that higher daily low pattern on QQQ or on the NASDAQ 100 futures. But as of now, we're still looking good, still riding that four period moving average. And I wouldn't be surprised to see some further gains. But I do think we might see a little bit of consolidation tomorrow, perhaps a little bit of a pullback, um, because ideally, you don't want the markets to get too overextended above these upper bands and stuff. You see how normally it trades within these bands. If it gets too far out of these bands, then a lot of times, like over here, pull back. Here, pull back. Here, pull back. Here, pull back. Every time it gets too far out of the bands. So ideally, bulls want to do a healthy little consolidation here. Let those bands expand so that they have more room to the upside and they can get there in a healthy way. As of now, though, markets look pretty good overall. A little bit of a higher spike in volume today compared to previous days, but nothing concerning as of now. Thanks for watching, guys. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, share. I appreciate you guys so much. And uh, I'm dropping my subscription soon, and I'm doing a big sale on my course. And if you guys want to learn how to do a lot of analysis yourself and so much other stuff about the markets, a lot of the wisdom that I've gained over the years and also in terms of uh, that's for my course and you know in terms of my subscription uh, I don't disappoint if you guys are happy with what I do on here I'm quite sure you'll be very happy with my subscription service because I do the absolute best I can and I always intend on giving very quality stuff and a lot of these other guys out there they charge a hundred dollars two hundred dollars US a month for their subscription now i haven't decided on a price for sure but it's not going to be that high and it's going to be in canadian dollars okay i'll just put it that way thanks for watching guys remember to press that like button thank you so much check out my site 10baggerstocks.com and check out my instagram and have a good night